Today in this video we're going to look at the new Raspberry Pi high quality camera module. It was released about six months ago and it's a new addition to the lineup of the existing cameras that they already have. We have the version 1 and the version 2 and we also have a, a no infrared or the noir camera which allows us to do night vision recording. Let's have a look at the actual hardware. We have three boxes that we're going to look at today. We have the high quality camera and two different lenses. Now inside the high quality camera box, you get this ribbon cable, which is slightly longer than the usual one. We have a small screwdriver, allowing us just to make subtle adjustments to the lenses. And we also have the high quality camera module itself. Now we're just gonna quickly unscrew the dust cap on the high quality camera module. And you can see there that blue square is the sensor, which is really large and is more like a, a DSLR camera, a professional level camera. Now what we're unscrewing there is the C-CS adapter module, and it's that adapter ring in the middle that allows us to connect to different types of lenses. At the bottom of the camera module, there is a thread that allows us to connect the camera module onto tripods. I'm using a small tripod here, but it could easily set onto a full-size tripod. Now in this box, we have the wide angle camera lens. We have two thumb screws on the top of this lens. The front one allows us to change the iris of the lens, allowing more or less light into it. And the one that says near or far allows us to change the focus of the camera. So to connect that up, we just unscrew that dust cap at the back. We take off the C-CS adapter for this particular lens, which is the wide angle lens, and then we just quickly screw that on. So this is the telescopic lens, it looks very similar. And uh, again, we unscrew that dust cap and we screw that into the C-CS adapter ring. I'm, I don't know much about photography, but I know that's needed. Now, to connect this to our Raspberry Pi, we need to take the screwdriver and just quickly unclip the connector at the bottom of the camera, making sure that the blue tab is facing upwards, and then we just push the cable, the ribbon cable, into the bottom of the camera module. And then we can just push using our thumbs that back in. And the cable should be relatively tight, it shouldn't come out. I would definitely recommend that you get a tripod for this. With the lens attached, it really is quite difficult to hold the camera in place, so this is necessary. Because this is so heavy, I've actually built a frame for the camera module to go into. Now, this isn't necessary, but I just had this stuff lying around and thought it would look great and was a really good way of making a portable camera chassis for this particular setup. Now, to connect the camera module up into the Raspberry Pi, again, unclip those two connectors, making sure that the blue tape on the ribbon is pointing towards the USB and network ports. There we go, all set up and ready to go. Let's have a look at the software. So the first thing we have to do is go to the Raspberry Pi logo, preferences, Raspberry Pi configuration, go to interfaces, and then we have to enable the Pi. So we just click that radio button, click SSH if you want it, I normally do. Uh, and then we just ask us if we want to reboot the Pi. So we do that, Pi is rebooted, and then we want to open up a command prompt. Now we're gonna quickly change the into the directory of my desktop, and then I'm gonna run the command Raspberry Pi or Rust Pi still, minus O for output and then test.jpg and that will start this preview and it will create a JPEG image file. So there we go, we've created our first image and taken our first picture on our Pi using the wide angle lens. Let's quickly full screen that and then view that at full size, the original size, and we can look at the quality that this camera gives us. You can see that it is far superior to the version one and the version two camera. The colors are not bad. They're a little bit washed out, a little bit lacking in depth and, and, and detail, but generally speaking, I think that's a really good picture. Now we're gonna run this again, but this time we're gonna add the minus T flag. So uh, Raspi still minus T 20,000, minus O for output, and the minus T stands for time, and the 20,000 is 20,000 milliseconds. 20,000 milliseconds is 20 seconds. What this allows us is, with the minus T flag, we can control how long this preview is displayed to the screen. This allows us to set the camera up, put it in position, and also make sure that we focused everything correctly and it looks the way we want it to. So um, this is really important. Now we're gonna move over to the telescopic lens and we're gonna run this again, but this time we're gonna put minus T and we're gonna put 30,000, so let's give milliseconds. So this gives us 30 seconds. Now when I first set up the telescopic lens, everything is out of focus. So I really need that 30 seconds to kind of go there and start moving around the different um, focal settings on the lens so I can actually get this set up correctly. Now this, 
photo looks okay. Um, but again, the colors look a little bit more washed out. So generally, I'm happy with this particular um, camera. It looks great. Um, and the different lenses do definitely give different types of um, pictures. So let's compare the four types. This is a picture taken on the telescopic lens. The colors are pretty good, not too bad. Uh, if we look at this from the wide angle lens, again, this looks about the same. Uh, there's a bit more color, a bit more um, sort of vibrancy in the greens, of the leaves. This is from my iPhone 10, So this is really detailed. Those blues of the sky are really, really bright. Um, so really fantastic. And then this is my um, Panasonic camera I film on. And again, more clarity, but that's a good example of four different modern types of cameras. Now, one last thing, if we want to take a video, we can type Raspi Vid minus T for um, five seconds. And we're gonna put this into 30 frames per second and output this to a video file. And with that command, you can very easily see that is how we record a video. So this is the official Raspberry Pi camera guide. It's free, you can get it in book format, but it is free and PDF. You can download it off the Raspberry Pi website. I'll put a link in the description. In here, it goes into huge amounts of details into all the different CLI commands you may want to use. You can see here the first eight chapters really go into the fundamentals of the controls of the camera, doing things like time-lapse, accessing this camera through Python. It then also goes into huge amounts of details into the physical setup of all the cameras and all the main lenses. I definitely recommend getting this guide. It goes into way more detail than I could possibly cover in a single YouTube tutorial video. Grab a copy of this and spend your time reading through everything. Hopefully this video has been of use to some people. If you like what you've seen here, please like and subscribe and thank you for watching.